I didn't see you there. Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. Now, I've been making games for almost 10 years now. I do it full-time. It's a full-time job. And one of my specialties is 2D character art and 2D animation. Now, the principles we're going to cover in this video will work with both Spine 2D and, honestly, Unity's proprietary animation system. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So we've got a character already drawn and ready to go inside of Photoshop. Now, first, before we export and start animating each one of these individual sprites what I want to tell you is a good character for your game has three principles that it follows first it looks really good when it's small and big that's what she said <laughs> so a lot of times you'll focus on the detail of your character but you won't actually realize that when it's small those details can conflict and cause some strange looks at a small size you also want to make sure your character looks great as a silhouette so if we actually create a silhouetted version of my character, he should actually make sense that way. This is just a simple principle, an abstract principle, that allows us to recognize our character, um, even if he's a silhouetted, simple shape. And so what makes this character um, recognizable is his hair is sticking out right here, and there's a nice shape for Pete. So the final principle really quick is you want to make sure there's a good contrast between your character and the background. So you can see we've got this bright orange sweater and um, pale pink face and that causes a nice contrast between the background and the character even at a small size. So now let's go ahead and export each one of these layers as a PNG um, into a folder. Now we can do this really quickly using a script called Photoshop Layers to PNG. And this is actually um, included in the description of this video. Once you've got it installed, all you gotta do is click it, name the folder, and then click OK. So what this is doing is it's going to export each one of our layers, all of these different layers, so the chest here, the head here, the eyes, the hair, every individual item that we're gonna be animating, and it also creates a JSON file. And that file, it can be imported into Spine, and what it's going to do is it's going to construct our character inside of Spine, just like we saw it in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click Import Data, find the JSON file, click OK, and we'll save our changes just to be sure. And as you can see, Spine has generated the entire Photoshop file with all of our different sprites, all of our images. And what we're going to do is actually just get rid of this background reference image. We don't really need it. And we're going to drag all of our sprites to the origin here and then put him sort of flat along the horizontal. That's where I like to put my characters. So he's at zero position right here. Now let's click on our root. And the first thing we're going to do here is starting from the root, we're actually going to create a bone called body. So let's just name this really quick so we know what it is. Once we've selected the initial bone called body, we can actually start laying out the skeletal structure of Pete. So don't really think of it as a skeleton per se, like the fully um, anatomically correct skeleton. Rather, think about how your sprites are going to be interacting with the skeleton. So I know I want to do a chest skeleton. And once that's selected, I can actually just select again. It'll create a child element so the arm will be connected to the body. And now we can create another arm which will be connected to the bicep and the hand will be connected to the arm. So as you can see, they're being um, created as children. So once we've done the arm, we want to actually go back and select the original chest bone here and do the same thing here. And then again, we want to do the same thing for the head. And the hair is connected to the head, but be careful, you want this hair to be connected to the head. So select the head and then draw that one. So here's his head and also we want to make sure we create bones for the eyes. Again, we're not anatomically correct here because bones, eyes don't have bones, right? I'm not, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure <laughs> eyes don't have bones. So now that we've got that drawn out, we can actually just click on the chest here and draw out the bones for his legs. Be careful though. Again, click on chest and then do this as well. So as you can see, we've created children for all the different root bones. And finally, attached to the chest is going to be his bat. Now be cognitive, or is it cognizant? What's the word? Whatever, be cognitive of 
where your fulcrum is and that's the point at which things rotate so for this bat it's connected to this strap here so the fulcrum is going to be right there all right now that we've got all the bones laid out we'll just name the bones oh boy oh boy oh boy looks like we've got everything laid out doesn't that feel good now we can actually move our character around this is always a really fun thing to do so look how cool Pete is. He thinks he's so awesome. And so we can move everything around. So just double check, make sure everything is, is animated properly um, or rigged up properly. Looks good, looks good. Ah, see, mistakes like this are important to find. We're actually not supposed to be able to move the entire thing. It should just move his right calf. So let's figure out what's going on. Looks like a thigh is in the wrong spot. So now everything is parented correctly here. So let's go ahead and create a stand animation. So let's call this stand. Let's click on this and it'll switch us to our animation um, section of spine. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I create stand animations. You can obviously do this um, different uh, depending on what kind of game you're creating. But for me, I want Pete to feel like he's swaying and then there's significant motion when he's standing still. So what I can do here is just rotate to the left and that's gonna create a keyframe and let's choose a number uh, maybe 15 so we're gonna go to our 15th keyframe and rotate to the right and then we're gonna copy this beginning one here and paste it towards the end so now Pete looks terrible and he's animating left to right trust me it's gonna look good so let's keep going so what we want to do here is actually move the legs so that they're stuck to the ground the way that I like to do this, and the only way that I've really figured out how to make this work, is actually just rotate our legs so that they're always at the same position at the bottom. So it looks like we're going to be four little squares over right there to the left of the bottom left corner of that square. Now what we'll do is click on our 15. 15th keyframe and then just make sure that it's at the bottom left corner of that square. So far so good, yeah? Um, let's see here, maybe bring it up a little bit. Just like so, maybe bring it down a little bit, make sure we can try, there we go. And let's just do the same for this guy over here. So <clears throat> the beginning state, we wanna make sure that the beginning state of this is actually copied and pasted at the 30th keyframe so that it loops. There we go. And let's do the same thing with the right leg here. So he's gonna be directly to the right of that bottom right corner of that fourth square. So then our 15th keyframe, make sure it looks identical. I, I would say he's probably gonna be bending that leg a little bit because he's leaning on it. Good, and make sure we have a keyframe here as well. Whoops. And copy and paste all of our stuff. That just makes it simple and safe. So now he's sort of leaning on his leg. See that? I think we could probably straighten out this leg a little bit more. There we go. We could probably straighten it fully. So he's going to have a cool little stance here like this. So it doesn't look great, but just trust me. Let's keep moving. And we're going to add some smoothing and some offset to make things feel heavy and weighted. So let's start at the beginning here. Everything is going to be moved to the left, right? So you can follow these principles with a lot of your um, various animations. Um, so everything will be moved to the left. His whole body is swaying to the left, right? His hair. Let's go pretty exaggerated just so I can get my point across. So move everything to the left. And on the 15th keyframe, remember he's slanted to the right. So we'll move everything to the right. Just like so, even his back. Now remember, we're not doing anything with his legs because they're pretty much stuck on the ground. Move his head to the right and his hair to the right. Make it pretty exaggerated with the hair, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. So he's gonna be swaying a lot and I'm just trying to get my point across here. All right, so once all that is animated, we can actually just go ahead and honestly, just copy all of the first frames and paste them on the 30th. I know we keep doing that, but you get my point. So here he is swaying like a crazy man and we will smooth those out using this curve button here and it actually will smooth out every keyframe so there's easing between, between each keyframe. But we're actually gonna exaggerate it a little bit so that it starts off really slow, increases quickly, and then eases very slow to the next keyframe. So here's Pete being weird. Now it looks strange, right? Like, what is he doing? Well, we can follow a simple principle that you can use on all of your animations, and that is simply offsetting um, bones in their movement as they descend down a joint. So for example, the hand is the furthest thing away from his chest, or the connection to the chest. So we can actually use this offset tool here and offset all the way over to maybe the 11th keyframe. Let's do the same with this hand, but maybe go to the 10th. Now, as we go up the arm, it will be less and less and less. So that's maybe the 7th. And I'm talking about this. I'm using this as a reference point right here. So maybe the 7th or the 6th. Let's do the 7th one for this one. I think that's, no, that's the 8th one. Then, as we go up the arm, it just gets less and less and less. So we're having an offset occurring for these arms here. And I think maybe we should probably, for this one, do something like this. Let's see here. There we go. Pete's arms are slowly starting to drag behind the body, making them feel a little bit more limp, a little bit more heavy. Now, let's do the same for his head here make it feel like a really heavy head so we can actually offset it to maybe seven let's see how that looks looking good Pete all right and his head or his hair we can offset a lot because those are the last thing um, connected to the chest 
Now that piece should probably be moving. Yep, we want it to be a little bit different than the other piece of hair. That is how you could create simple stand animation and you can apply those principles to honestly everything you're creating from jump animations to stand, running animations to attacking animations, giving a lot of weight to your player. All right, let's jump forward in time and we've actually got all of our animations created. We've got an attack animation, so let me show you that. Attack animations. We've got attacking down, attacking up. We've got dancing because everybody needs a dance animation because Fortnite, quip skateboard, fear, he's scared. Flipping animation. Pete is really weird, isn't he? Um, and as you can see, we've also got events. There are simple strings that are being fired and they get sent to Unity and you can tell Unity to listen for a string. So for example, Unity is gonna listen for the string footstep and then you could fire certain sound effects or particle emissions at the feet to make the game feel more alive. So we've got all these cool different events, footstep, jumping, jump trail, landing, play sound, all sorts of good stuff. And those events can be fired inside of our timeline right here. Let's go backwards in time though, because all we're gonna worry about is our run and our stand animations to make this simple for you. So let's go ahead and export all of our animations and our sprites and export them for Unity. Let's make sure we export to the right folder. And so we're gonna make sure we're in our animation folder. And this is gonna hold all of Pete's animation. So let's be sure that we're there. Let's also make sure, by default, a lot of times what will happen in Spine is it'll default to an extension of .json. You wanna make sure it's .json.txt so that Unity can actually read it. Also, you wanna make sure you're clicking pack here make sure that it's packing your sprite and creating an atlas so that unity can pick apart the various sprites looks like everything is good here you might need to go into pack settings and make sure everything is cleaned up in here but for now looks like everything is good and by default it'll probably be okay and then just go ahead and click export all right so we've opened up unity here and everything is showing up in our project folder with all of our files that were exported including the JSON file and the Atlas file. Now you're going to need to import Spine's runtime API inside of Unity and I've already done that because I'm smarter than you but there's actually a link in the description. All you got to do is click that link, head on over to the Spine runtime uh, URL and just download the runtime and click on it and it will import inside of Unity. So now that we're in Unity, we can actually create at the very beginning, run down to Spine, where are you? There you are. Spine Skeleton Data Asset. We're, that's the first thing we're gonna create and it's gonna be called Pete Spine, or Pete Skeleton Data. Now it's gonna be looking for that JSON file, but you're gonna need to tell it where it is. So we can drag it here. And it's also gonna be looking for an Atlas. So be sure your Atlas is set to one and we don't have an atlas file here so we can actually just create spine atlas so we're creating a skeleton data and we're also creating an atlas file we can call this pete atlas and obviously set the size to one now it also did not actually it did create a uh, material that's good usually sometimes it doesn't create a material so you might need to create a material and set it to spine skeleton but we've already got one so let's go excuse me let's go ahead and drag our um, let's click on our atlas and go ahead and drag our material there looks like we've got everything set up there and you want to make sure that your actual atlas file here is not set to generate mitmaps otherwise your character is going to look blurry so everything looks good here we want to make sure that we're bringing our atlas file into our skeleton data there we go looks like everything is good crap <laughs> <clears throat> looks like our p atlas does not have our atlas file text file so go ahead and drag in don't be an idiot like me drag in your text file to your atlas boom there we go everything's clean now let's go ahead and bring p into the scene so what you're going to want to do is create a game object go down to your spine and then click on skeleton animation be sure that it's named appropriately here. So we're gonna call it appropriately. Name it Pete. What we could use is the skeleton animation component here. That's fine. But this is a little difficult if you don't wanna write a lot of code because if you're, if, 
enabled in order to use this, you actually have to tell Unity when to fire certain animations with code. So let's actually remove this component and just create a skeleton mechanism component instead. This one will allow us to use the mechanism animator, um, or also known as the animator state machine, inside of Unity, so that we can tell the anim which animations to play based on certain booleans. So let's go ahead drag our Pete skeleton data here. Look, he's pink. And also, we're going to need to create a runtime animator. So just go to animator controller. We're going to call this Pete animator controller. And finally, what we want to do is drag inside of our skeleton data, we want to tell the skeleton data which animator we're going to be using. So drag that there. And then honestly, let's hit play first, just so this pink can get out of the way. There we go and go back to our skeleton data. Just click Force Update Animation Clips. And now you'll see we've got our two animations inside of our P animator controller. But P is actually not gonna do anything yet. We need to actually go to our animator, so that's in Window Animation Animator. And what we could do is actually be sure that the runtime animation, runtime animator is inside of our animator component. So drag that to controller, it's right there. So. Right now we're looking at that P animator controller. Let's be sure we drag in stand and then also run. And we're gonna set everything to look clean here. And we're gonna be sure that when you double click on stand, it's set to loop. Double click on run, it's set to loop. And it's the default, so right away when we hit play, that stand animation will play. But we, what we also wanna do here is we actually wanna create some parameters. So first let's create a Boolean called running not run, run would be a trigger. We're gonna call it running, and it's going to be a Boolean, so that when it's set to true, Pete will always be running. When it's set to false, it goes back to stand. Now we right click on this and create a transition, and we tell that transition, select the transition, and we tell it a condition of running equals true is what's gonna cause it to run. Now make another transition back, which will tell it to stop running and go back to stand if it's set to false. So now we can hit play. Let's actually save it just to be sure. <laughs> hit play. And let's go ahead and set our camera to perspective. And we should probably move it up and decrease that field of view. So there is Pete. Let's copy these so we can paste them in later. Um, there's Pete standing like a weirdo. We can hit run. And look, there he goes and back to stand. So obviously, as you're building out your animations, you can imagine your, your uh, state machine is gonna get quite complex with maybe 10 or 15 different animation states with all these different transitions, booleans for running, jumping, shooting, hitting, dying, all sorts of cool states for your character. So one piece of advice here is just to be sure you keep things clean. Make sure everything is laid out in almost a beautiful pattern so you can better visualize your state machine and the various animations and how they behave. So I'm gonna show you in the end what your character can look like in your game, what Unity can really do and what Spine can really do and make your game shine. Oh! I'm in the future. So here we are. This is what your character can look like if you pay attention to the detail of character, really fine tune every little animation. It really is a guess and check type of process. But overall, this is what we've got here. We've got a running animation, we've got a standing animation, attack animation, where you can hit things with your baseball bat, um, jumping animation, landing animation, and both these animations actually utilize adding another track on top of the jump animation, and that's a bouncing animation. So it causes Pete to feel much more bouncy and uh, much heavier. So we can run, and you can see the events are firing particles to emit. They're firing sound effects, running footstep sound effects. So the list goes on and on with the things you can add to your spine animations to make everything feel much more alive. So that's really all it takes to get your spine animations into Unity. Did you just hear my stomach growl? That was amazing. I'm so hungry. So that's all it really takes to get your spine animation into Unity. 
and get your character looking alive and make your player feel like they're part of that world. Again, my name is Thomas Brush. I create indie games for a living. I love what I do. If you like this channel, hit subscribe and also hit the bell to notify you of when I'm uploading a video or I like to live stream daily as I create my games. Also, another thing you can do is head on over to Patreon support for $5 a month or more, and you can get your name in the credits of these videos and also during the live stream. Now, if you're into indie game development and you want to get coached by somebody maybe as smart as me, I can coach you and I can motivate you and help you learn game development and start your indie game career on the right foot. So if that's something you're interested in, head on over to Patreon, take a look at the coaching tier and let me know if that's something you're interested in. Thanks again, guys. See ya. Bye.